So um, I'll start off. Thanks, everyone, for, for coming to my talk. Um, as mentioned, I only have about 20 minutes, so I'm going to speed through pretty quick. And then we can have questions afterwards, or if time didn't allow, we can have uh, hallway conversations or whatever. So um, a lot of there's a lot of uh, visualizations on the on the presentation. So afterwards, there'll be a link to, to grab all the data, the visuals, the slides, everything. So don't fret about the actual um, slides themselves. And don't fret if you don't get to kind of consume the whole the whole chart because there's a lot on some of these. And I don't think you're going to do that in like the 10, 20 seconds that it's on the screen. But um, I'll just jump in. So today we're going to dive into the hidden vulnerability intelligence that lies within the, the CISA's Kev catalog. Um, more specifically, what you can do to prioritize when you have more than one competing vuln in the Kev. So in other words, you know, there's multiple things added to Kev and you have to pick, you know, between one or the other. There are some findings um, as we look through the data that can help you make that prioritization decision. And to clarify, CISA is not affiliated with this talk. They have not approved it. Um, I'm just a big fan, so I hope that they appreciate it. Um, they are in the room, so I'll be nice. And also that means that if you have specific questions, we can have them cornered and make them answer your questions. So we'll get started. Uh, first off, I have to introduce myself. My name is Glenn Thorpe. I work for Gray Noise Intelligence. Uh, I lead the security research team there. And I have to start off by saying they're an insanely, insanely talented group of people. I'm very fortunate to, uh, to work where I do and do what I do with the group that I do. Um, I've been in security for over 21 years. Different focus areas such as detection response, vulnerability management, and emerging threats. Um, when I'm not doing cybersecurity things, I'm usually uh, studying weather patterns or scuba diving, observing sharks, stuff like that. That's my whole personality, basically. And uh, yeah, so just I'm underwater either literally or metaphorically. So that's just how we, that's how we do it in security. Um, so we'll dive in. So what exactly is the Kev catalog? Is anyone here not familiar with, with the CISA Kev catalog? OK, great. No, no problem there. So um, I knew there would be people here. I was ready for it. Um, so KEV stands for Known Exploited Vulnerabilities. And I'll start by saying note that it's past tense, which means it's already happened. Um, it's not a predictive tool. It means these are known exploited vulnerabilities. Like it's in the name. It's pretty clear. But I think that there, there's some confusion around that where people think maybe sometimes it's a bit more um, speculative than it really is. It was launched in November 21. And to be included in the KEV catalog, a vuln has to have three major attributes. One, there must be a CVE assigned. Makes sense. Uh, the vuln must be actively exploited in a way that's impactful. So for example, a misnomer that um, I've picked up from watching some of uh, the CISA uh, Todd's talks on the KEV, um, kind of doing my research here, is there's a, there's a misnomer that if it's in the KEV, that means it's attacked or affected government institutions or organizations directly. And that's not necessarily true, right? That's not necessarily true. That just means it's being done in an impactful way. It could be a, 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 you know, a, a large organization or something with a large footprint or another country, whatever. But it does not imply necessarily that it has affected our government in the US. Um, and the last attribute is there must be some kind of clear guidance on what to do about this problem. Otherwise, you're kind of just kicking a beehive a bit. Um, so that third one is kind of important to think about. So the purpose, the actual purpose of the KEV is to drive remediation and mitigation within the government. So it, it has directives that back it. The KEV has a, um, a, a due date within it. And again, so it's basically built by the government, for the government, but enjoyed by all for everyone to understand what's going on you know, in, the, in, our, in our security landscape or our threat landscape. But it's important to note that they are backed by some, some regulations and directives for the government agencies um, that, are, that are bound to them. Um, so next question is, has anyone analyzed the KEB before? And I say that in jest because um, it's been done a thousand times. But don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with like the, the, the details of the, the same old boring stuff or the same old like top line, top level findings, except just a little bit because I have to paint the path paint the picture for the path that I went down to kind of unearth these like three main takeaways that I have uh, today. So bear with me at the beginning. We're going to get somewhere towards the middle, I promise. 
So who is privileged enough to be on the Kev? Like what is the diversity of this list? Well, um, interestingly, so right now there's about, okay, first off, this data, like I had to cut it off at some point, so I cut it off the last week of June. So anything that happened in the last two weeks, not my problem. Uh, <laughs> But, so there's 1,100 entries across 180 vendors, but five vendors account for half of all the entries within the Kev catalog. Kind of, kind of interesting, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, vendors that are usually in Kev include uh, a lot of widely, widely used software like Microsoft, Adobe, Oracle, open source projects like Apache, or major security tool sets like, uh, or, or uh, security controls like Fortinet or Cisco, Juniper, et cetera. Um, so there's a lot of diversity in it, but it's interesting that most of it is just between those five vendors. Another interesting thing is that 77% of the vendors that are on the list were added within the first 12 months of the Kev being created. So this line kind of basically is the one year mark. You can see, you know, this is the rate of new vendors being added. So, you know, it kind of leveled off, you know, roughly after the first year, the, the rate of new vendors appearing slowed down quite a bit. All right, so maybe interesting, we'll see. Now, is the CVSS distribution for these, um, for the volumes that are on the Kev interesting? Not really. Um, the higher CVSS scores are on the right. The, the height of the, of the chart of the plot kind of indicates the quantity. But really, it's kind of as you expect. Higher CVSS scores mean unauth, remote, uh, uh, remotely exploitable and uh, maybe no authentication, whatever. So it's not surprising that it would lie here. It's maybe most surprising that there's like a three and a half um, CVSS score on the Kev. Like that's kind of interesting, but anyway, so like, I don't know. So let's take a look at the trajectory of the Kev, of basically how fast things have been added to it. So again, it was created late 2021. It goes up to the end of July. Interestingly, it's almost linear, except for you see that big cliff there towards the beginning of 2021, or 2022, sorry. Does anyone have an idea what that might be from? What maybe was, I see not, what maybe was happening globally that would cause a, just a big dump of new volumes being added to the cap? Okay, Ryan, yell the answer. A war, yeah, the, Russia, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, so we'll come back to that. So basically looking for all of these little tidbits of color that, that were you know, maybe not lying within the Kev that we could figure out, like how can we get a little bit more intelligence out of this. So the Kev's basically updated average every five days, like eh, don't, don't read into that much. Um, there's been, I know once, maybe twice, I couldn't prove it, that it was updated in the same day, twice in the same day. I don't know if anyone knows, um, but basically like the, you know, there's, they get added as they get added, you know, sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's once a week, whatever. Um, so eh, again, interesting, but I don't know. So we keep looking. Does anyone have an, a guess for what the average age of a Vuln that's on the Kev is? And don't get mad, Sissa, I promise we're going somewhere. So it's a thousand days. So like if you just look at the actual average age holistically, then the average age of a CV in the Kev is over a thousand days. And I'm just like, oh, that's not feeling great, weird. And speaking of ages, I had to make this joke because it's too obvious, but there is a 22 year old bone on the Kev. So that means it could play Taylor Swift 22 on repeat. <laughs> it could walk down Las Vegas uh, or paradise or whatever this, it could walk down the strip and gamble and drink. Um, the bone could, you know, do every, Thing that an adult can do in the US. So pretty crazy. But that does highlight like how integral it is for patch management in organizations to be very thorough, not just looking at what's current or what's new or what's just been released, but also you have to keep checking your, um, your organization for these older things because they still exist. We see them all the time at Gray Noise. Like people love the old bones because if they're gonna keep working, people are gonna keep exploiting them. You got, you know, you, you got to patch it. We all know that. So, so far, this isn't really painting a very timely picture. So how do we dig deeper? We dig deeper by basically uh, finding the signal and all of this noise. And the good news is gray noise is all about reducing the noise. So 
we need to accommodate for the outliers. And so when I was looking through the data and digging for some way to make this more interesting than I think a lot of, I mean, no offense, it's just like more interesting than what we've, we've already learned from the Kev, like there's gotta be something new here. I was able to break down the data set into three different essential categories. Um, the first category, and they're time bounded by the way, the first category would be the initial dump that was on November 3rd of 21, which is when the Kev was created. So this plot shows like the width is the quantity, the height is the, is the age, and so this is what the initial um, dump of 280 something uh, volts look like that were added to the Kev um, from the age and, and quantity perspective. The next data set was that really large cliff that we saw on that earlier graph. And so basically the invasion of Ukraine started on February 24th, 2022. And the next 107 days, there's no reason for 107 other than that's how the data kind of painted itself. Like as I looked at um, the age of the CVs that were added or the technologies or the rate, how quickly they were being uh, kind of batched together, there was just a natural bookend for the 107th day afterwards. So we went with that. So basically I broke that down into what's referenced uh, for the rest of the talk as UKR conflict. So this is that dump um, where, like I said, when you saw, and I'll bring it up here again in a second, that large cliff. Um, so you can see a much bigger diversity as far as age, and that's where you get that 20 something year old bone at the top. Um, and it's just really much more scattered. And then the last category is everything else. So when it really gets on that center column, center column being basically, you know, less than a week of, of CVE age, um, you know, everything kind of comes back together. So what we're looking at here is three groups. The initial one, like I said, 287 CVEs, 591 day average. The second one has almost a 1900 day average. So that's where you get that average of a, of a thousand days on Kev, like very misleading. It's a thousand days because this one uh, 100 and say 107 day period just really skewed it. So you have to take that into account and then everything else. And so interestingly enough, the average age of the first dump and the, and, and the everything else category is essentially, you know, pretty close together. So that's cool. And then clearly the outlier is the uh, Russia, Ukraine invasion dump. Okay. Same data, different view. Um, maybe it helps you consume it better. Some people don't like the violin plots and stuff. So, um, but left to right is the age, uh, and, and top to bottom is the quantity, but same information. And again, this will be all available for you afterwards. So let's look at that cumulative view again, like I teased, um, so we put lines on here. I hope you can see them, but, um, basically, you know, marking off the beginning and the 107th day of the Ukraine, you can kind of see how that data really kind of level, like literally levels out and then keeps its continued crawl. So the rate of addition is pretty linear, which is kind of interesting. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. We'll see, but it's just interesting. Um, but what we do know is that there's the first like full calendar year of, um, of the Kev that doesn't have like a major outlier is 2023. So we're kind of just going to say 2023 is really the baseline because 21 was only a month of data and, and 2022 was just so heavily skewed by the, by the invasion. Let's check back in on the CVSS scores with these data sets broken up. Does that look interesting? I think not. Um, they're almost all near identical, especially the top and the bottom are really, really close together. Um, and even the CVSS score of the conflict group is pretty close together. So, um, I think I'm kind of done digging into the CVSS score, looking for some, some interesting things there because it's, it's pretty, pretty well represented, uh, across all three data sets. So, okay. So those are kind of the basics, right? Like we're going to step it up a notch. So question. Of course, it's a trick question. I'm giving a presentation about it. Do you think the average age of CBEs is increasing or decreasing over time? Are they getting essentially like added to the Kev closer to their um, existence or their their known about date or or later? Does that mean sooner or decreasing? Okay, good answer. So yes, they are absolutely decreasing. So. This shows it broken down by year, 21, two, three, four. Um, further to the left on each one is basically the age of the CVE. And then again, height is the quantity. So again, 20, the first year, a little abnormal because it was the dump. Second year, the Ukraine war, like everything crazy. 
But then once you get to the, you know, quote, first baseline year of 23, you can see that the CVE age is actually quite young, like within the first week of their, of their age, um, of their uh, assignment. And the trend continues into 2024. So now it's looking a little bit better. Um, a couple of thoughts on this. I think the, the age, like the age of CVEs being younger is, part, well, part of it's definitely due to attackers exploiting things faster because they are, we know this, like that's not news. But I think it also speaks to a bit of, you know, SIS has been very serious about doing outreach and partnerships and info sharing and stepping that up each, each year and building relationships. That's why they're here. Um, I think that's why you're here. So it's, it's you know, I think, I think it's paying off because people are sharing more earlier um, and openly. And so that, that helps us all, it, it, it helps everyone. So, and there's the ability to submit to the code online soon, soon. So they're working on it, so it's great. So 2023 is the first baseline year. Like, you, like I said, you see the uh, major shift to very early uh, or very young bones being added. So Kev is again looking a little bit more timely once we start taking out those anomalies. Another question, is the Kev data static? And this one I think might be surprising to some folks. So I'll tell you that it's not static and I would ask other than like the, the like there is an occasional removal of a vuln from Kev, don't worry about that. But within the Kev, is there a field, what field might be updated near silently? I think it's silently. So within the Kev, I should have brought up the, the actual fields in the data set at the beginning. But there's a field in there that is known ransomware campaign use. And so this was added last October, so it hasn't even been in a full year. And it is to do what the name says. Is this known to be used in a ransomware campaign? And so the options are known, unknown. That's it, right? Is there one more? Yeah. Known or unknown? So I started digging into this and, oh, well, first off, we know that field matters because there is data to suggest, it's not our data, but um, there is research data out there that suggests that when a vuln has the known ransomware campaign used attribute, it's patched two and a half times faster. That makes sense. Um, ransomware is expensive. We all are very familiar with it. So, you know, okay, cool. So this is a five minutes for. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness, I am behind. All right, we're gonna fly. So yes. So basically, there's a known campaign uh, ransomware campaign use flag. It does get updated silently, and so. What this looks like is, again, offline uh, consumption, but the 40, there's been 41 times where that field has been changed um, after being added to the data set. And we found this by basically harvesting the, the Kev every day and then doing a dip to see when something changed. So as far as I know, this isn't really publicly announced or uh, displayed in some way. So if your organization cares or utilizes this field in some way, then it's important that you go back and check on it to see if it's changed. It is a one-way street from unknown to known. It's never reversed. Again, makes sense. Um, but for the secret intel, so that's just kind of an interesting thing in case you didn't realize that. Um, but how many people to, or how many organizations pay attention to the time to fix a vuln? So again, on the Kev is a due date. That due date minus the day that it was added is the time to fix it. So a lot of folks probably don't because it's basically meant for government organizations. However, it can be telling. When the Kev started, we had basically a default of 180 days or uh, 14 days. And then about the time of the Russia-Ukraine war, you can see it standardized on 21 days and that has continued. But as we get down uh, to the bottom right there, you'll see as of late, there's been more additions um, to the Kev that have a shorter time to fix. So that's really gonna show you uh, some insight into kind of the level of concern is what I'm calling it. That is, uh, that is known about this vuln based on either what they've seen or maybe the, uh, the threat landscape, whatever. And so the last deep find I think is what matters is the day of the week that something is added to the Kev. I think this is super cool. Um, basically again, left to right is years. So early on kind of all over the place, we're just figuring it out. Standardizes in 23, 24, 
continues except it gets really quiet down there on Fridays. And those Fridays had had a time to fix of seven days. One of those had, um, oh yeah, time to fix of seven days. The one was a Fortinet and one was a Palo Alto uh, Pan OS phone. So essentially, when you dig through this and you're having to look through the data to figure out like, I need, I got more than one thing to fix on the cuff. What should I prioritize? Basically dig into what day of the week it was added. That's an interesting tell. Um, what is the time to fix on that bone? That's an interesting tell. Um, and then lastly, the, the ransomware campaign use, again, if that's important to your organization, your processes, you definitely want to kind of check back on that. And maybe like we can work with CISA to like flag that when it gets changed. Um, so I got I to gotta wrap up. I'm somehow far behind. Um, and oh yeah, don't try to predict the Kev. Like it's just not a thing. But if you have to, look at vendors that are already on it because they got added, you know, that 77% number. And then of course, like attack vector none, user interaction none, privileges, react, uh, privileges required none is a good start. But anyway, so here's uh, my information. This link will have the slide, the data, um, how to contact me. Um, shout out to Bob Rudis. He's the one that did the visuals for this. You may have seen his work. You probably have, you just maybe not, you don't know it. Um, he's amazing. He's the goat for data work. Um, and shout out to Feedly. I don't know if anyone from Feedly is here, but um, they don't know about this, but um, we're a customer and they just, when you do a good product and you make jobs easier, I'm going to call you out for it. And so they have, so hopefully they'll give us a discount next year. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Thank you, Glenn. We have time for a couple questions. Okay, great. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so if no questions, uh, you can get with Glenn uh, yeah. after this show.